thank you guys for having me in the first place. And hello to my grandma because she's watching online, so it's all cute and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm Eliza and um, I run an anti-knife sort of awareness prevention campaign. Um, at 14, people described me as rude, antisocial. Um, I felt unwanted, unloved. I just felt horrible within myself and it knocked my confidence a lot. Um, I was kicked out of school when I was 13 and I wasn't in schooling up until I was 15. I was um, messing around with friends. I was annoying the public. <laughs> I was causing trouble and I was just being a little asbo to society. And it really wasn't nice for my mum or my grandma or any of or really any of my teachers. I was kicked out of school for my behavior, um, my overconfidence to speak out of turn and say what I had to say. And because I was full of pride, I'd never let anyone knock my pride or feel that my pride was being hurt in any way. And I had a lot to say for myself. After being kicked out of school, I went to a pupil referral unit and that's where I made most of my friends that I still have today. A pupil referral unit is basically a school, a mini school for all the kids that have been kicked out of school. Um, so there was about 30 boys, five girls, and it wasn't really mixed at all. It was eight people in a class, um, two teachers. One was there for sort of like care work to make sure that you're getting the work done, like, some of the kids had ADHD, some of the kids were really rude and they were there to look after them and help them through their studies. The other teacher was obviously the teacher that taught the subject. Um, where I was obviously you couldn't do as many subjects as you could do in school. But I did my um, fashion GCSC BTEC and I got all my um, 13 A star Cs. So I'm proud of that as well. Um, I started my anti-knife cam campaign because the first time I ever heard about a stabbing, I was 13. My friend got stabbed right down the neck and was um, in Mayday Hospital near my house on Lastport. I know another guy who's in now, inside, for manslaughter. I also have a friend that's dead now. I've seen three stabbings in my life. I've seen a boy be stabbed in the head, a boy be stabbed in the back and in the chest. Um, I don't know, people say that it's not to do with um, just boy and boys anymore and boy gangs anymore, as a very good friend of mine is a girl and she's been stabbed. Like, when I was young, it wasn't, I didn't think it would ever happen that I would ever be involved in the culture of gangs or knives or any of that. I didn't think I would know it. I mean, you hear about it on the news and you hear about it um, from friends and Facebook and other media sites and stuff like that, but it doesn't hit you till it personally happens to you. I think when I was 14, I ran a um, Speak Up Stand Tall seminar, which was 10 young people, I think it was five girls, five boys, telling the government what was happening. I had um, Vernon Coker there, Steve O'Connell, and local MPs. I had police there, um, councillors, and a lot of public there. And it was the young people saying how they felt about drugs, about what was happening, and just basically giving an insight to our lives. Um, after that, it was a load of meetings with up in up at Parliament and everything, and it was kind of boring. But, you know, you have to do it. And it was just, it was like they wanted to know me. And I'm quite an inner person. I don't like telling the world how I feel. I can tell them what happened, but I won't tell them how I felt about it. And it's, um, it's hard to get your point across when you can't, tell, when you can't say your feelings out loud, because no one will ever understand your feelings. I mean, after that, we did a Valentine's Ball when I was 16, and it was to remember all the people we've um, loved and lost. And we had um, 
balloons and we did a balloon release and we set off 400 balloons into the sky. Everyone wrote a personal message saying rest in peace to the person that they've lost from it. Um, we had a big board and the whole board was, um, it was, up, it was as tall as me and it was filled with names of young people that died in the past three years. Um, nowadays, I'm working with Channel 4 Battlefront, who hooked me up with the mentors Liberty and Albion. With Liberty, we did a mentoring day, and I trained, and with Liberty, 20 young people to go into schools and mentor um, kids ages 10, 11, and 13 and 14 about the dangers of getting involved, because as far as I see it, it's all about prevention. When I got involved, I, I, didn't, I didn't know anything about it. I wasn't told anything about it. Obviously, my mum didn't know anything about it. She didn't live that life when she was younger, and it's all changed since then. Um, when I went, we went to the first school the other day with my team. My team have all been through something. We can all connect because we're all so close. It's like some of them have been stabbed. Some of them are ex-gang members. Some of them have just like been kicked out of school, and some like everyone's been through something in life, as has everyone in everyday life. We've all been through something. But I think it's because we all know that culture, we click so well and we can feed off each other's ideas and we got the mentoring programme done on that one day. And it was all about prevention and trusting the young person and being able for them to trust you as well. We went to the first primary school and it was actually astonishing how much they knew. They were like writing lyrics and spitting bars and stuff about, um, about shanking people and killing people and they were aged 10 and 11. And I met a head teacher as well who told me that a boy brought a knife into the school at the age of age nine. So that's why we're starting the work in schools. Um, yesterday, the team also went to a secondary school um, and it was amazing. We, did, we had to obviously do completely different workshops that we did in both the, in the primary schools, we were doing classes and we were splitting it off into groups so we could like have personal time with them and we did bullying, um, personal safety, and sort of easier stuff like why not to carry out your phone and why not to broadcast like what money you've got on you and what you're doing and that type of stuff. But then with the secondary schools, it was hard hitting. We made a film with ITV Fixers about a young boy going up to get to stab someone. And it stopped just when the boy's about to get stabbed. Um, and we did this in front of 240 13-year-olds. Um, and then we made it interactive, so they came on stage with us and they told us how they felt about the situation. And in the beginning, it was, um, they were all quiet, but at the end, there was all their hands up. And it was like, they all added me on Facebook now. I don't know whether to accept them and stuff, but it's cute. It's like, it's like they want to know you personally because they want to know your story. And um, I've got some footage today that is going to play now, so it's basically the first primary school we went to, which was recorded by James, who's sitting there. So, yeah, thanks. It's nearly nine o'clock, very early, and we're about to start in the primary school. So, I've got my team with me. I've got Katie, Josh, Debbie, Hartwell. We're going to get this on the road. Hello, we're here from Lives on Lives, and we've come to talk to you a bit about um, the reasons why I joined Lives Not Knives was because I joined a gang when I was 13. I experienced life crime. I got slashed across my eye and down my face. I had friends that had been stabbed. I had friends that had been killed before. And I felt like I really wanted to make a change, talk to people who potentially could become part of this life crime and deter them. Basically, we're just going to talk to you about the dangers of getting involved and sort of what you want to be when you're older and how you can achieve these things. Good morning, Year 6. I'm Mark Wallen. I'm 20 years old. When I was in Year 6, I joined again. I was there twice and up to when I was 14 years old. What we are part of is trying to make sure people follow their dreams. I just think it's important that, like, we're young people and we're trying to make a difference. Kind of empowers them to kind of speak up for themselves. We're opening up and we're letting others see that we've all done something wrong in our lives. We're not all Einsteins and we're not all perfect students and we're not all going to get A stars and go to uni, but we're still going to get somewhere in life.
Thank you, everyone, for listening.